Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about The Muppet Movie from 1979. And this is a winner of the Patreon movie review vote. If you would like for me to review a movie of your choice, then click on the link below and pledge, and maybe I'll be reviewing your movie next month. The Muppet Movie has a lot of great things about it. From technical aspects, to concept, to the idea of being different from the show while obviously being a part of it. The Muppet Show, I mean. And I love all those things about it. And I think that's the things that this film always gets remembered for. You know, Kermit riding a bicycle, being able to see a full a Muppet or any Jim Henson produced puppet, you know, from the waist down. And that sounds creepy. But <laughs> we're seeing like the full body. Well, that doesn't sound better either. Regardless, there is a certain earnestness about this film that is impeccable. That I love about the Muppets, but for some reason the Muppet movie has that earnestness better than anyone. Now, at a certain point, you're like, well, yeah, the Muppets have that quality about them. And I think the thing that I find more surprising as I get older and as culture changes and as we have more and more fourth wall breaking jokes and kind of knowing self-aware humor, which the Muppets absolutely have. And they are amazing at it, especially in this film, when this wasn't, you know, happening in four to five cartoons that are the most popular shows on TV or something, or at least the ones I watch. This isn't cynical while being fourth wall breaking. This is self-aware, but is isn't overly doubtful and hopeful about society and your chances. And I think that is one of the harder tones to nail because there's no blueprint for that. Bugs Bunny was cynical. Deadpool is cynical. You know, all those people who do those things are cynical. But Kermit and the Muppets aren't. You know, you might not like that about the Muppets, but I think that's what definably makes all the creations from the Muppets to Sesame Street so wonderful is that you can be self-aware, you can be knowing, you can be a smart person, but you can also be earnest, and you can also be hopeful, and you can also be a dreamer. This film is supposed to be an allegory for Jim Henson's rise to stardom, or fame, or what have you. I don't know the Jim Henson story that well. I've read a biography before in my life, and I recognize it took him a little bit to get where he was, and he used every opportunity he had, and he used any time he could advance the work of puppetry, he did. And he even did that with this film. He used the major motion picture budget to do things like having Kermit ride a bike or being underwater for like weeks so they could shoot the opening scene of Kermit singing Rainbow Connection. It took like five weeks to make that shot. That's just something I really enjoy about this film. And I think it gets that quality it gets better than any of the other films. Normally you have them directed by someone within the Muppets organization or more attached to the kind of films they're making, whether that be the other two of this era where Frank Oz and Jim Henson directed The Muppet Caper, Frank Oz directed Muppets Take Manhattan, Brian Henson did a bunch, James Bobbin, but you basically have people who are very in it. This is probably the guy who least wanted to be there, which is James Frowley, who won an Emmy for directing a Monkeys episode, which might sound disconnected or just I'm listing off a credit, and maybe some way I am. But also, uh, the Monkeys have a similar tone, and you should really check out the Monkeys. It was a fantastic TV show to what this is. So if I was working on the Muppets movie and someone said, hey, we have this guy who directed a bunch of Monkeys episodes, I'd be like, oh, perfect. This is going to go great. And they didn't, and they hated he was just a miserable piece of shit and they didn't ever work with him again although he died recently so r.i.p there's an extra kind of world quality to this because you have a live action director directing puppets rather than a puppet director who's more comfortable in that world directing a puppet movie it feels a little different and i i like that quality to this film i also like the technical aspects i think they come off very flawlessly none of those read as well for me because by the time i was old enough to have seen this film a lot of this stuff had been either surpassed or weren't as awe-inspiring as they were in 1979 so i'm more just speaking towards the past than as much in awe of them, but uh, reading about their dedication and how much time it took, I am in awe of that, certainly. One of the things that this film really started, the Muppets themselves have ripped off and even Beavis and Butthead ripped off, is the idea that, well, we can't just have them do the Muppet show, but like with movie cameras, because what's the point in that? Let's do this origin story. Let's have them go on this road journey. And I think that is really genius, but it's also the first time you really put Muppets in the real 
worlds, which is something that definitely would happen in all of the Muppet films going forward. But the way they use the real world are almost like the set pieces that they would use on the show. Instead of having a set and, you know, a song and a musical number or a comedy bit or something like that, uh, for that set, I mean, effectively it's the same thing, but instead you're like going from location to location and you're broadening it out in a lot of ways. So the same way Beavis and Butthead do America do it actually, which is actually was picked by the same person uh, who picked this movie, which there's no connection, I don't think, but it's kind of funny um, because I realized like the thing with the Beavis and Butthead movies, they realized you couldn't just have them hang out in the apartment, the house all the time. You had to see them grow and do more. And in this movie, it's like you had to see, well, how did the Muppets get together? Let's meet them all along the way while also being a little kind of breaking the fourth wall, like having uh, Dr. Teeth and Electric Mayhem find them because of the script and like the, how the script's like a part like in a Bugs Bunny cartoon. This is very cartoony in a lot of ways. Uh, it's interesting how much the Warner Brothers kind of sensibility kind of bleeds over to the Muppets. One thing that this film is good at is like changing the location enough that it feels like you are on a journey and it feels larger in scope and sort of gives it an extra aura of importance that makes it worth like, you know, maybe schlepping out to your theater if you're a big fan of the Muppets rather than just staying your ass home and just, you know, watching the Muppet show because it's like there and why not? Why would I pay to see this? And this kind of gives you an extra reason. The high stakes are higher. This is a major push forward. And technical wise, it's a huge push forward and they really wanted to sell it to you. And that I think goes through and through this film. It very much feels like they're putting on the maximum show. Like this is the thesis statement. We're not maybe gonna come back and do another one. So like, let's push this forward. There's a cameo in this film from Edgar Bergman, which was a big deal for Jim Henson to have him do a cameo. And it was his final thing before he died. Sometimes when I watch this among the original three, this feels like such a big statement. The other ones feel, maybe a little looser. They do have a different quality as they are directed by Muppet people, uh, Hanson uh, and then Frank Oz. This just feels like, like this is the culmination and also like this is the most Hollywood they've gotten. Like the whole idea of it, they even present it as like, you know, this is the true story presented by Hollywood. We're all going to watch in our Hollywood screening room, which was interesting. I like the idea that you almost know that this is a movie within a movie. Like this is not just, you could literally cut out the parts in the screening room and be like, this is just a movie, even though they cross section one another. I mean, you're led to believe this is basically the true story, but there's probably more to it and probably other details that obviously the Hollywood movie didn't need, so it was gone or probably shouldn't even have. And I like that quality to it, this idea that this is a whole movie within a movie. That's what this is, you know? <laughs> like that works with the behind the scenesness of the Muppet show, but in this you're getting to understand like that, you know, the rich and famous contract that Orson Welles has them sign is almost to make this movie. So it's like, it's interesting, the whole kind of scope of this and the history of the Muppets. And then what they started to accomplish, it feels like they start breaking out because the Muppet show wouldn't last too much longer after this. And it felt like they were going to expand on further and further with the Muppets and with puppeteering. And that this was just like, let's see how far the zenith point we can. And this was, and probably still is the most popular Muppet film. In terms of attendance, I think it definitely is. Uh, and adjusted for inflation it is. I think the newer Muppet, the film just called The Muppets with Jason Siegel, seemed to probably outgross it or gross close to it, but I don't I don't think in terms of attendance it did. I just look at this when I'm watching it as like, wow, this is like such a major kind of a thing, but it had this sort of magic to it that as always, you know, I think it's always regarded as the best Muppet movie. I never like to say that because I think as we've had these different eras, different eras have such a close relationship to them. I hear a lot about Muppet Treasure Island. I think I never was as connected to that one personally, but there's some times I'm really nostalgic for Muppet Christmas Carol, and I'm sure there are kids who are kids now who will feel that way about the Muppets or the Muppets Most Wanted. So I, I, I don't see this connection almost like, you know, how people feel about their first James Bond or something. But to me, this was always the one that felt the most special, felt the most centered, felt the most important to the Muppets because they were able to do more and push themselves to this area, but they were able to kind of come up with the idea of 
let's make this bigger and more important if we're going from the TV show to the big screen. But at the same time, the story is so there, you're not thinking about that. I'm not watching this and be like, oh, well, of course, you know, he's uh, riding a bike and he's having to go across the country. This needs to be bigger in scope. I'm just along for the journey. I'm singing, you know, things like, like moving right along, which I love that song. I brought this with my daughter and she loved her favorite part is, of course, when Big Bird shows up, she was like freaking out because she didn't know. I didn't tell her Big Bird was in it. And that part's glorious. I really like that part. I just generally love this film. It's one of the greatest kids films ever made. It's also, I think, just has such an unbelievable, wonderful quality of, I think, following your dreams. It's the one where they're not on something silly or adapting something or something like that. And I'm fine with those and I actually quite like those, but I think this is the most of what The Muppet Show was, which was putting on a show, entertaining people. Let's start to play the music. It's time to light the lights kind of thing. That idea of putting on a show, that old Hollywood idea. There's a lot of older Hollywood from Bob Hope to Orson Welles, obviously newer Hollywood, Telly Savalas, Richard Pryor. Um, Paul Williams and James Colburn and Dom DeLuise. Uh, I love the cameos. Orson Welles' cameo is great because even though he was a Hollywood outsider at the time, and I think it would have probably made more sense to have a bigger Hollywood person at the time, but I love Orson Welles in that moment because he represents the majesty of Hollywood, and I think that works well in that moment. And it's almost like not having the biggest stars at the time, although they had Steve Martin, so, you know, pretty close there. It was more about having the idea of Hollywood and that idea that the, the Muppets can be a part of. And that was kind of the hugeness of it, I thought, was really that. As a kid, this has always been the thing of like the long journey to be able to follow your dreams and of believing in something and believing in yourself and the friends you learn and loves you meet along the way and i've always loved that about the muppet movie and i've loved its earnestness and all those things and although i love the other films and how they adapt things which i think they're very good at i like the kind of realness of this more than those other films and i think that's something that's always stood out to me i remember when the muppets the newer one came out I went through the phase of watching this quite a bit, and this is obviously the better movie, but I think, um, which I even think the people who made that movie would agree with, I think it's because of that, because it has that energy within it, and that energy is just so real. And that might sound like a weird thing from a movie that's like very, has a lot of special effects, has a lot of puppets in it, has a lot of things going on in every shot to make that shot possible very manicured and labored over but i think the majesty of hollywood and movie making is be able to shift through all of that and speak to you and speak to you as an audience member and to make you sit there and cry or laugh or anything like that and not think about how they made it the pain the the hours it took to set up a light that's not what it's about it's about speaking to you i think the muppet movie does that better than any other muppet film and while i was watching it these times watching it for the first time with my daughter and watching again uh by myself i noticed that about this film that this film is the most genuine and i think that's why we'll never really be able to shake the muppet movie so if you have seen the muppet movie and you would like to talk about it then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to. And this was a winner of the Patreon movie review vote. If you would like for me to review a movie of your choice, then click on the link below and pledge, and maybe I'll be reviewing your movie next month. Thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.